dagefato ta kenna ummata oromo bakuma jirtanit bagana gan jiratan kam biya kes jirtanis biyota daddati bakatani jirtanis bagana gan jiratani naga ko kiyata an sudan ke summa adda sini qabajde dubadde ture ke summa adda kunoti akuma sinin chede bulcha magala colombia haiti minnesota jedamu bulcha magala saniti wan romo wan dubatan qabu afan ingilifatin dubanna wan taif boda amma won ta dubanne oromi fan sini ifsu yala kanaf nu duka bua amma fan ingilifatin tifufna thank you dana nice to meet you glad to see you thank you so much and a lot of Oromo people look at that, look at the love they, they have for us, imagine. <laughs> so, um, you, are, you are the mayor of uh, Columbia Heights, yes. city in Minnesota mm -hmm. right now. So you are, um, I'm gonna ask you to introduce yourself in a little bit. Uh, we have 40,000 Oromos in Minnesota. Uh, we always elect, uh, vote for senators, governor's house of representative one of the two big counties that democrats win all the time is ramsey and hennepin county mm -hmm. i know as a mayor you are non uh politician Correct. you don't involve the republican or democrat or anything so we're going to talk about these people we elected they're not doing anything mm -hmm. almost nothing so when the Oromo people in Oromia is under a genocide, uh, first I want you to introduce yourself to the viewers. So I have a lot of viewers from the U.S. government, the mm -hmm. people are in here, the politicians are in here, non-politicians are in here. I just want you to introduce directly yourself to these important people. Look at the love. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Donna Schmidt. I am the mayor of Columbia Heights, Minnesota. I've been mayor since January. I was uh, this is my first term and um, we have a very diverse community here in Columbia Heights we have a, a large percentage of Mexicans uh, we have a large perc percentage of uh, uh, African Americans but um, uh, which is labeled African Americans when you do the census, but it is actually a large number of Somali and uh, Ethiopian and uh, from people from Liberia too. So we have a very diverse uh, community. Uh, plus, we have a large group of um, American Indians too within our community. So we we are not just your usual German uh, <laughs> German. Um, Polish neighborhood anymore. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of German, so Germany has done a lot of good things for the Oromo people. And then in the eighteen eighties, when there was a f when when there was the first genocide. Mm -hmm. uh, n now these days, many refugees, Oromo refugees in Germany, mm -hmm. are getting deported to uh, Ethiopia, where they are facing genocide. So the govern, government of uh, uh, Angela Merkel is somehow quiet. Mm -hmm. And I even sent a letter. Uh, by the way, thank you for being part of the uoromo.org, uh, United Romo Nations. You're welcome. Thank you so much. You are part of uh, Dana Schmidt, the mayor of Columbia Heights, is part of the uh, uoromo organization. So. It's a life-saving organization that we are trying to build the Oromo people life together. Mm -hmm. So uh, in Germany, uh, in, in many countries, especially in Germany now, Oromos are getting deported. Their cases have been denied. Why do you think it's happening? But they saved these people from the genocide in 1880s. Uh, now in the 21st century, when there is a lot of uh, media around, while they see what is happening, the blood on the street, they are quiet. Do you have anything to say, Angela Merkel? She might receive it because there are people on the Facebook mm -hmm. who will give it to her. Uh, do you have any idea why they're doing it? Um, probably the saddest part is that they're giving the wrong information 
from uh, the head of the government, Tigri government. It is not, it, uh, that does not represent the Oromo people. It represents just a small portion of Ethiopia and um, the majority of the country is Oromo. And because of that, um, they're the ones that are getting labeled as the, the dissidents. They're getting labeled as the ones that are against everybody and they're, they're the terrorists. In reality, they're not. That is not the traditional Oromo people. They're very, um, very calm, very, very gentle, and um, they you. will, they will, they will allow a lot of things to happen, and um, and very, uh, very mild mannered normally. So this is, so to be labeled as a terrorist, it is just one way to get rid of that, that different uh, group of people that the Tigri government is trying to get rid of. Uh, I'm I'm very interested. You uh, mentioned the issue of terrorism issue. Uh, well, for many viewers, uh, especially Americans like you, uh, everything is foreign uh, to you guys. You probably don't know where Al Shabaab came from. Uh, 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 but what? First of all, in 1991, when the Tigrayans have controlled uh, uh, Ethiopia uh, with the help of Oromo Liberation. Uh, front and uh, Eritrean Liberation Front uh, with the Collusion Army. The Tigrayans became control of everything and they labeled Oromo as a secessionist group. Mm -hmm. So they, they just, oh, they want to secede their state and they labeled as secessionist. Now, here in 2005, it came up uh, uh, the, the election. By the way, President George. W. Bush mm -hmm. has put pressure on the Tigray government to make election fair and free. Mm -hmm. He put pressure on it. So what happened is the election was fair and free. And the Tigrayans, the Tigrayans were defeated. Mm -hmm. They lost the election. Mm -hmm. Then what happened in 2005 after they lost election uh, they start killing opposition, in the opposition and they arrest, a lot of things happen. And then uh, that was a time the uh, 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 Oromo military generals, uh, brigadier generals, so rec uh, recognized, the brigadier general recognized by the United States, European Union, and United mm -hmm. Nations as a, a peacekeeping in the Horn of Africa was, uh, uh, it, you know, him and some other military generals, mm -hmm. the Oromos, refused to cooperate mm -hmm. to create Al Shabaab in Somalia. Because after that election, the Tigray government lost entire credibility as a government. And this is under George W. Bush. Mm -hmm. So when they lost that popularity of being a government, they came up with a system of going to Somalia and make a, a recruit young people. They spoke to the military generals actually to help them do this. Mm -hmm. And the Oromos have refused to do that. That's why they took their military and went out of the country. This is why the brigade, Oromo Brigadier General was loved by the United States and European mm -hmm. leaders. Now they're understanding it. After he refused uh, to cooperate, and then him and other militaries, uh, also another one was uh, 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 many of them, they, uh, you know, uh, went to Eritrea, folk keep coming, a lot of people call, and mo these are mostly immigrants around the world, the Oromos who are dying, who are getting killed, they're calling me to tell me how many people are getting killed. Yes. So anyway, in speaking of that, then the Oromos have refused, the military generals have refused to create Al-Shabaab in Somalia, therefore they left the country. Mm -hmm. Those generals Oromo left in the country had got killed, kidnapped, and disappeared. Those who left out of the country, living in other countries, because they refused to cooperate to create Al-Shabaab. And then in 2006, Al-Shabaab came to reality with it, by the Tigrayan government, mm -hmm. and they sent it to uh, Kenya to hit, you know, a bit like they attacked Kenya three times mm -hmm. and recognized, then from that time, the Ethiopian government was recognized as a legitimate government because they're fighting Al-Shabaab. 
that's how they 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 acted they they've been a good actor on this mm -hmm. and then what happened is with this terrorism law in 2009 remember 2006 was when al shabab was created and then ethiopia applied to the international community saying that oh here look we are now threatened Mm -hmm. We are the only one fighting Al-Shabaab in the Horn of Africa. So, we have enemies. Mm -hmm. We have a threat. What can we do? And then they asked international communities their permission to come up with anti-terrorism and NGO law. In 2009. So they have established the anti-terrorism and NGO law to apply in Ethiopia. Then, every Oromos, from four years old to 80 years old, getting killed mm -hmm. with that anti-terrorism and NGO law. Because everybody, whoever is killed due to uh, Al-Shabaab and, and terrorism allegation, mm -hmm. they don't get justice. This is international community's law. Anybody killed because of Al-Shabaab and terrorism, no justice. Do you think, do you think Americans like you might have know this systematic way of Tigran's building to uh, eradicate Oromo uh, indigenous nation from the land? Do you think Americans people like you might have known this? We have no knowledge of it. It's, it's not what's on the news. We listen to the news and if the news isn't telling us accurately what's happening, that's what we believe. And it's, we believe what's in English language we don't understand uh, Ethiopian, we don't understand uh, your language, so we have no way to know that what we are hearing isn't the truth. If the government, the Ethiopian government, is telling us that you're terrorists, that's what we believe. You are right, because uh, it, 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 whoever controls the media, Yes. Um, do you think that's why the world is quiet when there is blood on the street every day? Even now, as I speak, people are dying. As you can see, they keep calling me and sending me the dead bodies, the people getting killed. The international community is just, they just are blindsided. And mm -hmm. do you think there is, there is something that they, they're missing that they did not understand? They're not hearing the whole story. They're just hearing one side. Okay. And this is why you need to get out your story. This is why you have this form of media, the FaceTime, you have, you have Facebook page, you have the website. People are starting to hear when you go and speak to churches, when you speak out to community groups, when you meet with leaders, uh, they're getting the message. But it's going slow, very slow. And it's not going to save the people that are out there right now. So uh, there are also uh, Oromo uh, speaking group yes. uh, who are really not Oromos, but they act like, like an Oromos, mm -hmm. uh, working with the Tigray government, both at home and around the world, mm -hmm. and trying to destabilize mm -hmm. the Oromo unity as a for a common purpose. And they are participating in a genocide. They are not real Oromos, but they are Oromo acting Oromos. They act like an Oromo and they are not. Mm -hmm. Do you think the US government might have been able to identify this? Oh, there's no way. There's absolutely no way they could, could identify that. They don't understand the dialect differences. They don't understand where people are coming from. There, there's absolutely no way. Uh, they would understand that they are not they're not in the country to see it they're not in the country to hear the stories they're not in the country to uh, see what the the atrocities that are happening and they're being told by the government of to create dump government that they are killing terrorists and if a four-year-old is a terrorist I cannot believe that. An 80-year-old, no, 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 no. 
that's not, that's not, that's not right. Well, it's not right. It never will be. No. Uh, and uh, well, of course, under Obama administration, they have been provided helicopter. The Tigray government were provided helicopter to commit genocide. Under Trump administration, what the hope is that uh, there was no helicopter provided yet. Mm -hmm. uh, and even, even President Trump spoke about uh, limiting the funding on, for the country like that. Yes. And, but I know the Tigrayan government are very much, by the way, the election night, they were uh, uh, ready to celebrate uh, the election. Uh, they are hoping that uh, Miss Hillary will yes. win. Uh, that didn't happen. No, it didn't. So when when Trump won, they kind of were devastated, and they threw away even the party out there. They didn't even eat anything. They just, including State Department. State Department was there, <laughs> and U.S. is that much of uh, one ethnic minded uh, department themselves was one ethnic minded out there. Mm -hmm. The minoritarian killing the majoritarian. They were participating in a party. We have full video of that. Mm. And after Trump was elected, they just were disappointed and they just ran apart. They didn't mm -hmm. even c came together anymore. Now State Department is led by uh, Rex Tillerson, uh, uh, transporting the military that are committing genocide. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. and listens to their story, then he will understand what has been done wrong in the past and hopefully he can correct things. Uh, I, would, I would encourage him to, again, uh, another election, force the country. He, he could do that. President Bush is one of the hero of, of mm -hmm. on every immigrant, he's, he's one of the hero. Uh, and uh, every president knows that, but it is not something desired by anybody. It is not. Okay. It, uh, there's been times that the U.S. has used the war in other countries to train their their um, their army. As you would want it to. Um, and you would think in a world where we have cell phones, where we have instant internet, that we would find out this information immediately. What, what message do you have for the Oromo people who are watching around the world? Uh, there are people here that are understanding what is happening. They are seeing what is happening. And uh, we will, we will try to talk to our officials here and contact them to try to